their stuff. But they won't warn you about Piper, about John MacArthur, about Billy Graham. They won't name those because why? They think they're preaching the truth. That's why, in bottom line, they're all preaching the same thing, as I've shown you before. Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits in Matthew 7.15. You know them by their fruits. But multitudes of people flock to these deceivers, follow them all the way to perdition, believe in all the way that they have some special knowledge of the truth that nobody else possesses and they're anointed of God to carry it off into the world. Look, look at the Pentecostal world, how deceived they are. Look at the nonsense that goes on there. I mean, that stuff is so outrageous. I wouldn't even think you'd have to do a video about it. It's so outrageous. It's so off the wall. But yet, thousands, millions of people flock to hear that stuff and it's convinced it's of God. It has nothing to do with, none of it has anything to do with God. Yet they got guys in there that debate it whether or not it is of God. And afraid to say the false teachers are just that, false teachers. No, they're still our brothers. And we got to pray for them. No, we got to silence them. Sign their mouths must be stopped. They're subverting and overthrowing the faith of people by what they teach. That's what Paul said. But no, you don't follow what Paul said. No, you can't do that. So in the churches, you go into that nobody's concerned about uncovering the deception or exposing these false teachers that are promoting the deception. Because that fatal mistake that, that everybody makes that I've talked about in the last in the last video on the keys to understanding was that you go into the system assuming that these guys are really Christians, these, these, these uh, ministers and pastors, when the vast majority of them were never probably actually saved to begin with. And what they believe is the lie, as we've shown. See, nobody tells the people in the church that the devils also believe. Like James said in James 2.19, the devils believe, the devils have faith. What's real faith? Faith is the faith of Abraham that obeys, that walks, that walks in the steps, does the deeds of faith. Just like repentance, proven by deeds, faith proven by deeds. But no, they never told that because, well, that'd be works. That'd be works, and everybody knows, everybody knows that salvation is not a works, and you can't judge, and nobody's perfect. Everybody knows that. They don't know anything else. They know that. Don't believe me. They'll tell you that. They all came in their sins, believing they're born sinners, incapable of doing anything right that would attribute to their own salvation, as, as they, these guys like to constantly tell them. But they believe because their, their nature was offset by that grace that came in. Now they come in and they're declared righteous. And they're, they're set now. They made their arrangement, as Ed Young likes to say. So this deception then takes on an entire new dimension that's beyond anything the normal mind can comprehend, it seems like. People seem to be so confused about it. See, it requires the spirit of truth dwelling in you, and you diligently digging into the scriptures, asking, seeking, knocking, steadfast, a hunger within you to, to find this truth and never give up. And look what's lurking behind the shadows of delusion. Pull back that curtain, as I've said. So the likelihood of anybody actually possessing this kind of faith and a real genuine repentance towards God is non-existent in the system because they don't preach it. They don't preach it. I'm talking. They may have a little bit of sorrow or an altar call where somebody weeps a little bit and they pre repeat some words and they feel a little bit refreshed, just like anybody does when they weep a little bit. You feel a little bit refreshed afterwards to pour out your emotions, but nothing changed. They're still the same wretch they were before. Why? Because they didn't repent of their. There was no clearing of wrongdoing. There was no stopping of the sin, because why? It wasn't necessary. What was necessary was to get them to receive Jesus. They didn't receive anything. They received delusion. It's like all the rest of you. But everybody does it, so it must be right. So, you're not going to meet up with God inside the system, but perhaps maybe outside the system and outside the system have any possibility of unraveling this deception that you're going to encounter when you go in. See, the system today 
consists mainly of an image of Christ that's empowered by the dragon, the devil, like in Revelation 13 says. It walks, talks, it performs just like the real Jesus. It does, it does everything. It looks like a lamb, it speaks the language of a dragon, it says in those scriptures. I think in Revelation 13, 16. But speaks the language of the dragon. Under this image, he's got an army of false teachers. There's not just one antichrist or one false. There's many false, an army, many antichrists, as John said. Many. If you look in 1 John, the very next book after 2 Peter, of course, is 1 John. Towards the end of the Bible. End of the New Testament, at least. So they, they're controlling the platforms and dispensing the lie. Collectively. They preach a message that convinces everybody that they can retain the evil eye of their flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and still enter the kingdom because grace. God decided he's all-powerful, and grace has got him covered. Rather than grace being the power to teach you godliness and self-control and bring you into an acceptable state where God can receive an obedient heart of love from you and circumcise you with his spirit, rather than that, Grace is just a cover to declare you righteous and cover your sins. So God can see you through the Jesus filter. That's all it is. That's what's the bottom line, okay? They all preach it that way. So the people in the system are blind to the message, just like Matthew 13 taught, the blind leaders of the blind. The false teachers appear to them as harmless lambs leading them to the promised land. They can take them all the way right up to their funerals, as I've showed you before. You can't talk them out of it. Nothing you can say or show them in the Bible has any effect against the power of this lie over them. The eyes of their understanding are closed to the truth. They've been given over to the strong delusion that Paul talked about in 2 Thessalonians. And the only possibility of anybody coming out of this is a repentance on the scale of Nineveh. Where the entire city, from the king right down to the last person, to the donkeys in the street, stop what they were doing, stop their evil of their doings, put on sackcloth, covered their heads with ashes, and pleaded to God for mercy. Perhaps he'll turn from his wrath. That's what it would take in the churches today. It would take weeks and months of that before anything would happen because of the delusion is so strong and powerful. The problem is that the system is covered by a system of theology that won't allow any of these things. Because why? Well, you'd be earning your salvation if you did those things as Nineveh did, or anything else. So your salvation is not a works. Your salvation is a remedy to your sinful nature that you were born with. So the lie then continues unabated and takes a horrible casualty, soul casualty, that's almost impossible to comprehend. But if you come into this after finding real repentance and faith, as babes in Christ, craving after the Word and thinking that you're going to find fellowship among that thing, God help you. Because you're not. You're going to get devoured by the wolves more than likely. And that's why I'm doing this series of messages on this in articles. We'll be posting up on the website and offering as a booklet. So in the beginning, the very beginning, you've got to dig down deep, like Jesus said in Luke 6, in his version of the Sermon on the Mount. Dig deep. Lay that foundation deep into the truth. Check everything. Assume nothing before you place your trust. It said everything. There's that one verse that one of the sisters emails me all the time, and she says in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, test all things and approve only what is good. Test them. That's right. Like John says, test the spirits. You've got to learn to tell the spirit of truth and the spirit of error when you hear it. And their ears have grown numb. They're numb to the truth in the churches. They're blind. You're going to be blind with them if you sit there and say, well, he said a good stuff today. He, he said some true things. They all say some true things. But bottom line, their message is death, as I've shown you a hundred times. So you never would go into a huge business deal not knowing the facts or invest in something that you didn't investigate if you did you're gonna get ripped off and taken advantage of you wouldn't marry a person that you don't know anything about some of you might have done that and messed up your lives but generally you won't do that would you vote for Adolf Hitler 
a lot of people did. But why do you let these false teachers then lead you down the road to destruction like lambs? Why do you sit under them? Why do you donate your money to them and your time and your effort? Get involved in their activities. If you want to go there, fine. I can't stop you. You're an adult. You make your own decisions. I can only advise you from my experience. If so you want to go, you go. But be aware of what you're going to face there. And contend earnestly for the faith as you're instructed to. Are they going to like it? No, they're not going to like it. Are you going to be popular? No, you're not going to be popular. Are you going to last very long there? No, you're not going to be there very long if you do that. But if you don't, you'll be there forever and you'll go to sleep. I've seen it happen, folks. I've seen people on fire for God that know all this truth. They go into that system and die. I've seen it. So don't think you're any better than them. Any smarter than Pelagius was when he opposed the Roman Empire. They killed him. They'll kill you spiritually, just like it says in Revelation 6, 13. That's what it means, deprive you of spiritual life. They shoot the wounded. We'll get into that some other day. You wouldn't trust uh, anybody that just come to your door and try to sell you something. You should be suspicious of that, right? So if you truly encountered God in repentance and faith, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, as you claim to be, then this won't be a difficult thing to do. This isn't a burden. It's not burdensome. It's not difficult to understand. The urgency should already be there. I shouldn't have to in, in put it into you, hold a gun to your head. If it's not there already, and you got some lame excuse why you can give in to what's going on in the churches, well, then you're giving in to the sin message already. You got to make the. You got to decide from the beginning where are you going to stand? See John, he says, it's an easy test. You look in 1 John, start in 1 John 3, verse 8, he who sins is of the devil. It's a good test. There's people living in sin, living in adultery, fornications, their, their attitudes are wrong, their dispositions are all messed up, they're mean, they're angry, they're full of hate and bitterness, and, and envy, covetousness, he who sins is of the devil. He who does what is right. See, a tree doesn't have to practice growing apples. Get rid of that word practice out of your Bibles. It should be produce. A tree produces a fruit. It doesn't practice producing a fruit. Same thing with you. He who produces righteousness is right, is what John's saying. That's what that word means. Look it up. Look it up in 1 John 3. That's what he's talking about there. He who loves God keeps his commandments. 1 John 2, 24. If he abides in him and his truth abides, he keeps his commandments. That's the pattern of his life. Throughout the scriptures, that's shown. The pattern of their lives was keeping the commandments of God. Being blameless, impure before men. A clear conscience. You got a clear conscience before men? You're not telling any lies? You're not living any devious things? You're not dubious with people? Now, if you are, you got a problem. You may not have really went through repentance. Probably not. He who is of God hears his truth and abides in his truth. 1 John 4, we are of God. He who is of God hears us. Not of God, do not hear us. In that scripture. If they don't hear the truth, then they're not of God. It's that simple. It's, there's nothing complicated about it. They reject the truth. They got a million excuses why you can live in sin and why you don't have to do anything and all that kind of thing. They're not hearing God. He who has faith overcomes the world, the flesh, and the devil. 1 John 2. The victory that overcomes the world, the flesh, and the devil is our faith. You love not the world or the things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those are the things that have to be plucked out and crucified in the process of repentance. Church don't preach that. Nobody preaches that. Nobody in the system does. He who does what is right is righteous, as we pointed out in 1 John 3 again, 7 through 9. He who produces the fruit of righteousness is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. Produces sin. You can't produce good and bad fruit on the same tree, Jesus said. You can't grow fruit on thorns, the thorns of sin in your life. So. That's your test.
That's your test. How are you going to avoid the error and not be deceived? Search the Scriptures. Search the Scriptures, as Jesus said in John 5, 30, 20 and 39. You search them, thinking that you're going to find eternal life. The Scriptures testify of Him. Follow and obey Him. Never settle for anything that's said by man or some doctrinal belief. Get rid of all the books and the seminar, the commentaries and all that other... Don't, even, don't bother with that stuff as a new Christian. Don't bother with it. It's going to confuse you.